In this lesson, we'll look at how the Sanger method is applied to DNA sequencing. To learn about it, we'll be answering a series of questions that you would likely find in a post-secondary level biology class. The first question reads, in 1980, Frederick Sanger was awarded the Nobel Prize for inventing the Didioxy method, or Sanger method, of DNA sequencing. A double-stranded DNA segment, approximately 700 base pairs in length, is heated, or treated chemically to separate the two strands. The single-stranded DNA that results is placed into a test tube that contains a 9 to 1 ratio of normal deoxynucleotides to didioxynucleotides. A didioxynucleotide has no OH group at either the 2' prime or 3' prime carbon. As a result, whenever any didioxy is added to the growing DNA strand, synthesis stops at that point. So in this experiment, you set up each of the four test tubes as noted below. In test tube number one, we have all these deoxynucleotides added to the mix, plus this didioxynucleotide. This didioxy has the base adenine, but remember the sugar molecule is modified to not contain a OH on the 2' prime and 3' prime carbon. So if this molecule happens to base pair with thymine along the single-stranded DNA molecule in the test tube, the DNA molecule will stop growing from that nucleotide onwards. So this is didioxy adenosine triphosphate. In test tube 2, we have the same as in test tube 1 for the deoxynucleotides, and the only didioxynucleotide added here is the one associated with thymine. The same idea applies in tube 3 and 4. Notice how their didioxynucleotides differ. All tubes contain the same single-stranded DNA molecules and the same primers. All the components required for DNA replication, such as enzymes, are present in each test tube. You allow the replication to continue for the same length of time in each test tube. At the end of the time period, you extract the DNA from each tube and run it on an agarose gel. You dye the gel with ethidium bromide and observe the following banding patterns on the gel. So this is what the gel looks like and these are the bands that appear. For simplicity and for this demonstration, we are using only 20 bases in this DNA that is 700 base pairs long. So in the very first part, which band in the gel contains the shortest DNA strand? What is the identity of its terminal DDNTP? The further the DNA strand travels along the agarose gel, in this case this is the furthest one, that means it is the shortest. The DNA strand is the smallest out of all of them. The DDCTP had to have base paired with its opposite nucleotide being guanine. So when this nucleotide paired up with guanine, DNA synthesis stopped right then and there and the DNA molecule could not grow any further. So to answer part A, it is this band, and the terminal DDNTP is DDCTP. Now if this was the shortest, then the next shortest would have been this one. Now I want to remind you that each of these test tubes have the identical DNA in them. So if this test tube only had DDTTP as its didioxynucleotide, and it stopped after it base paired, then the sequence of this DNA is going to be, so far from shortest to longest, it would be C and then T. The template strand would be the opposite nucleotides. For example, base pairing with cytosine would be guanine, and base pairing with thymine would be adenine. So you would see guanine first and then adenine next. So that answers questions A and B for question C, continue reading the terminal DDNTP of each band from shortest to longest to determine the linear sequence of the nucleotides in the DNA strand complement. What is the sequence? So if we continue what we learned, the next one, or the next shortest was G, then comes T, T, A, A, T, we're over here now, C, and you would finish off the rest like this. The next part of the question asks, the Sanger method has been modified so that each DDNTP 
used is now flagged with an identifying fluorescent tag. Assume that you run the same experiment that you did earlier. However, this time you combine all of the different nucleotides, both the DNTPs and the DDNTPs in the same test tube. You run the products of the reaction on an egg rose gel, indicate the band you would see on the gel below using the appropriate colors where TTP is red, GDP is yellow, CTP is blue, and ATP is green. So we would have the exact same banding sequence that we found right here, where this is the closest to the five prime end of the DNA molecule, and this is the three prime end of the DNA molecule. So the banding sequence you would write down is the exact same thing that we wrote down there, along here in these rows. And where you see the C's, that would be a blue color. Where you see the thymines, you would have red. Guanine, you would have yellow. And the ATP would be green. Be mindful if this experiment actually did happen. You would have one long column of DNA bands. And since they're all dyed with a fluorescent dye, you'd be able to look at the colors and determine the sequence from that.